morning, everyone. Technical difficulties this early. Um, thank you for thank you for having us this morning. And I wanted to um, first talk a little bit about the Census Bureau. As many of you know, we are in a process of coordinating one of the largest um, surveys in, of our agency. So the Census Bureau is the federal government's largest statistical agency. We conduct over 130 surveys each year with more of our well-known surveys listed here. Collecting data on the nation's people is the decennial census, which takes place every 10 years. Activities surrounding the 2020 census is currently taking place. If you have questions about that, please reach out to us uh, via our emails. We also have the American Community Survey, which is a program that collects demographic data annually. For business statistics, the Economic Census is our most pro comprehensive program, taking place every five years in the years ending in two and seven. We also have the Census of Governments, which is the public counterpart of the Economic Census. I wanted to take an opportunity to talk a little bit about the Economic Census because we're in the process of releasing the data. We have, sorry, there you go. The Economic Census is our most detailed survey. We publish nearly every two to six digit NICS codes with over 200 data variables. That include core statistics like the number of establishments, and that means the number of businesses. We publish data on employment, on payroll, and some measure of output of the business, whether that is sales, shipments, receipts, revenue, or work done for the construction sector. We also have detailed sector-specific variables. For the 2017 economic census, there are a number of changes. The changes to geography and the changes, and there are changes for industry codes. There is also a brand new North American product classification system and a few other changes, including new disclosure rules. If you have any questions about these data, please let us know. Uh, my colleague Andy and I are conducting webinars as we speak about the economic census data. For today, we'd like to introduce you to two of our newest surveys. The surveys are part of our experimental data program and in response to COVID-19. That means that they're temporary. But if there is enough um, response from our customers that say that it's a needed survey, then the agency may consider continuing post-COVID-19. These surveys can be accessed um, from the experimental website. Here I have the URLs for not only where to find the survey, but also to download the data. So let me just give you a quick intro to what this is. So the Small Business Poll Survey invited more than 100,000 small businesses each week to respond to a short emailed 16 checkbox survey estimated to take five minutes or less to complete. The survey is expected to last just over nine weeks and results can be found at census.gov. So I'll go live in a minute just to show you. The small business sur poll survey includes information on location closings, changes in employment, disruptions in the supply chain, the use of federal assistance programs, and expectations concerning future operations. The collaborators um, for this survey include the Small Business Administration, the Minority Business Development Agency, and others. The Census Bureau defines a small business as single business locations with one to 499 employees. So let's go live. I hope you can all see the dashboard. So I want to introduce the dashboard as a place where you can find information for the next codes. So if you hover over each of these right here, it will tell you what this um, the sector percentages are because of the of the size of these we couldn't really put all of the nix descriptions at the bottom but if you hover over it it will tell you what it is for example nix 23 is for construction and uh, let's see nix 53 is real estate and rental and leasing the topics covered include financial assistance cash on hand, changing revenues, temporary closings, missed loan payments, requested assistance, received assistance, and also the outlook. 
the geographies included are national, the US, the 50 states and District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the, 50, the top 50 metropolitan statistic areas of MSAs. Looking at the different tabs here, the, the dashboard will show you data at the national level when you first get there. It would also give you the, this graphic to show you the collection dates and what the, the overall effect from each of the questions is. Here, because we're in the fifth week, you can have access to all the previous five week, uh, four weeks. The survey questions, you can ch change each of them if you wanna see the answers. And you can do comparisons by either MSA, next code, or state. We also have the weekly comparisons. Again, you can also pick each of the questions, temporary closings, and compare from week to week what the overall impact is. We can also download all the data. You can do it by the national sector, the national and state, national state by sector, the top 50 MSA subsectors unit response rates. All these files are downloadable and they're actually pretty easy to get. So you just click on it, open, and you should have access to it. Okay. We also have the information about the data, how the data are collected, and we also have a help frequently asked questions. Each weekly visualization is independent of previous and subsequent visualization releases. The week span listed in the visualization represents the dates responses were received. Businesses were questioned regarding the experience of their business in the last week and since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. The map on the responses by geography and sector Section of the visualization displays the comparison of each state to the national average for any given question selected from the drop down. The graph on the response by geography and sector section of the visualization displays the comparison of each sector to the national average for any given question selected from the drop down. The survey response detail section of the visualization can compare the responses for all sectors at a national level to the responses from the specific sectors at a national level or to the responses from specific states for all sectors. The dashboard was created with the idea that it should be easy to access the information and though once you click the state, it doesn't necessarily regenerate uh, or repopulate with the new data. So rest assured that when you go to download your data, you will get all that information. Let's look at what the top 50 MSAs data looks like. If you have any questions specifically to how to read this data, you can reach out to us at the end of this um, presentation. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Let me go back to the next one. The household Pulse survey is the survey that, that grew out of an effort by the Census Bureau to leverage the expertise of other federal statistical agencies. The goal is to measure various sectors impacted by COVID-19, which include employment status, consumer spending, food security, housing, education disruptions, and dimensions of physical and mental wellness. The Household Poll Survey produces and disseminates data on these social and economic factors in near real time each week. It is designed to measure and track change over time. The Census Bureau will implement the sample as an overlapping panel survey. Each panel is in the survey for three weeks and then replaced by a new three-week panel. 
Respondents in each panel will be interviewed every week for three weeks. The Census Bureau worked with the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the National Center for Health Statistics, USDA Economic Research Service, Department of Housing and Urban, De Urban Development, and the National Center for Education Statistics to gather this data. So I would like to go live to this for this too. Let me see. Like the small business one. Hmm, let me see what happens. Like the small business one, the household pulse survey those have the different information that I just mentioned. We have the detailed tables. Let me go back. For example, if you wanted to see housing tables, let's look at the confidence in ability to make next month payment for owner occupied housing unit by selected characteristics. So you can download or view each and every one of these tables. So as you can see here, it does have a lot of the characteristics that you would want to see in a demographic type survey. It does have the breakdown by age, by sex, Hispanic origin and race, education, marital status, presence of children under 18, respondent of household member experience lo that experienced loss of employment, respondent currently employed, household income. Each of these tables has the breakdown by state, so you do have to scroll over a little bit to get to Virginia. But once you get there, you're able to actually do comparisons with many of the other states and also at a national level. And Virginia, here we are. I wanted to also show you how to get to these data sets. So the experimental data products page will have links to each of these two poll surveys. You can learn more to, to either get to it or to get more information. The interactive tool, the data tables is the first thing I showed you. We also have public use files, but interactive tool, it just gives you a glimpse of the data that you'll see. And here you can select it by either state or by MSA, um, metro area. So we can look at Virginia. You can scroll down. So here you have a lot of numbers, but what it is is the weeks that you that the data is selected. So if you only want to see the latest week, you'll see the comparison to the national level and uh, the Virginia. The data, as I showed it in the other, uh, in the data tables, these are the questions that you have, loss of employment income, expected loss of employment, food scarcity, delayed medical care. So the cool thing about this is that not only can you see the visual of what this data is showing, but also you can just download the data that um, you'll be able to dive into a little bit more. And here are the public use files. Oops, death by demo, right? <laughs> okay. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Andy, who is going to talk to us about the COVID-19 hub, which is something that also was created in response to the COVID-19. Andy? Thank you, Barbara. Um, so if someone could make me the presenter, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Oh, thank you very much. So my name is Andy Haight. Um, I'm an economist at the Census Bureau. I've been working with Barbara for a number of years. Uh, Barbara and I do a lot of outreach and marketing for our business programs. Um, and I've been at the Census Bureau for a little over 32 years. It's, it's hard to believe I've been at the Bureau for that long. So as Barbara was saying, uh, the Census Bureau has an amazing wealth of data. Um, even after more than 30 years at Census, I still am astounded by the volume of information that is available. Um, but sometimes getting to that data can be challenging. And when we moved into this whole COVID-19 mess, uh, we realized that presenting key demographic and business data 
was critically important to help decision makers and even the people in the local communities and business owners in local communities make informed decisions about their businesses and about what's going on in their communities to help them identify vulnerable communities, et cetera. So we created a hub, a website uh, for COVID-19. Uh, this is the Maine Census Bureau's homepage. Right here on uh, the top of the homepage is the link to what we call our resource page. When we click on that, we come to a, a page that has links to a few of our surveys. Uh, Barbara talked about the Small Business Pulse Survey. She also talked about the Household Pulse Survey. I will also mention that we have a program called Business Formation Statistics that provides information on startups. Um, as you can probably imagine, uh, not only have existing businesses been impacted by COVID-19, but we've seen a marked decrease in the number of businesses that were starting up, that were applying for employer identification number with the IRS, that were becoming incorporated, et cetera. Um, so we have these ongoing programs. Uh, BFS has actually been around for a long time. But what we decided to do was instead of publishing that data annually, we're going to publish it weekly. So we have a brand new data series that looks at business startups um, at the national, state, and county level. Um, on a weekly basis. Um, we also have some data tools down here at the bottom. Census Business Builder is a tool that Barbara and I are very familiar with, uh, where we both are the co-leads of the team. Um, and then at the bottom are some downloadable data sets from the American Community Survey. Uh, the ACS is our largest demographic survey that we do at the Census Bureau. If you are already not using it, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you all to learn about the American Community Survey. It's a fabulous data program. At the very top of this page, though, is this hub. So when I click on the hub, you come to our COVID-19 de uh, demographic and economic resource hub. Um, at the top of the page, uh, we right away see some basic statistics. Total population 65 and over, the total population that's uninsured, the number of employer businesses, uh, these are businesses with paid employees, and the number of non-employer businesses or self-employed people. When you think about the businesses in Arlington County, you have not only businesses that have paid employees, uh, whose employees receive a W-2, uh, at the end of the tax year, uh, but we also have self-employed people. Uh, there are a lot of folks in Northern Virginia that are doing quite well for themselves being a self-employed truck driver or self-employed uh, consultant, et cetera. So we have some basic level statistics, but the really interesting part of the page starts here in this first panel, and this is what we call the impact report. The panel is uh, displayed in two pages. This first page has some basic demographic information on the population. There's some key facts across the top over here. We have some business data, some poverty data, some information about people that are at risk, as well as uh, health insurance coverage. And then on the second page, this is all demographic data, language spoken at home, uh, Hispanic origin, uh, some other statistics here in terms of poverty and population, school enrollment, and then more about health insurance. Um, this page here is fully interactive. So if I were to click on one of these uh, statistics, one of these uh, items, we get a panel that pops up that gives us more information. So in this case, we're looking at the number of businesses for 20 key industries that we selected uh, that we felt were the ones who were most likely going to be impacted by COVID-19. Um, this panel, uh, by default, automatically defaults to New York State, but of course you can change this um, to another state. So I'm going to scroll down and choose, oops, try that again, scroll down and choose, if I can manage to do this here, Virginia, not Texas, you don't care about Texas. <laughs> so once we choose Virginia, uh, the report is now going to refresh and it's going to give us information for the state of Virginia. But as you can see, we can also choose uh, counties in, in Virginia. So I can scroll down and choose Arlington County. Oh, I'm going to cast it. There we go. 
is Arlington County. The map is going to zoom into Arlington County, and now this impact report is going to refresh and show us information on the number of businesses, the demographics, the poverty status, health insurance coverage, et cetera, specifically for Arlington County. Um, this report can be opened in its own panel, and everything you're going to see today is all downloadable, uh, it's all manipulable. You can um, incorporate these visualizations into your own websites uh, by, by embedding uh, the application, et cetera. So that's really the sort of the first component of this dashboard. Uh, below there are then some demographic and economic analysis maps. Um, and these maps uh, give us even more detail about what's going on uh, in the U.S. during this COVID-19. Um, there are eight maps shown. Uh, this map is looking at data on businesses. Um, this is the self-employed data map. Here's a map of looking at households with income less than $75,000, um, et cetera. So there's a variety of other maps here. Here's maps by, on poverty. Um, right now, the map is only displaying data at the state level, but if I zoom in on this map, specifically to Virginia, you will see that the map will then refresh and will then uh, switch over to show county level data. There we go. There's a, now we get to county. And if I kept zooming in, we could actually look at census tracts within Arlington County. Uh, we did not put the track level data in that top panel in the dashboard because it would have just been a little overwhelming. And plus, people often don't know what track they live in. Um, so this way, when you view the map, you can figure out, oh, OK, you know, this is the address that I care about. That is in track number 101. Um, so you have this great resource, uh, again, fully shareable. Um, in, in, in terms of embedding it in your own websites, using this data, downloading the access. Um, Esri actually built this dashboard for us. So you'll notice that all of the information that you're looking at today is embedded in Esri's Living Atlas, um, which then means that any of you who are GIS professionals or happen to know someone who knows something about geographic information systems, uh, they can actually take all of this data and build it into their own dashboards, their own maps, map products, et cetera. To that point, uh, we also have some highlighted data sets. And this begins even further to allow people to embed this information and, and share it. So if I click on this ACS, uh, American Community Survey data on population below the poverty level, we're now going to come to a map that will allow me to go in and actually pull down all of those data layers uh, that we have available in ArcGIS for you to be able to incorporate into your, into your products. Um, we have a lot of states that are taking this information and personalizing it for their particular use. The last section I want to talk about here at the bottom uh, are these categorical data sets. Again, allows you to go in and access that raw data. The big difference here is these data sets that are accessible under these buttons are not only available as shape files and as data layers, but they're also available in downloadable format in Excel. Um, all of our data that's in this tool is available in the Census Bureau's data API, which is an application programming interface that would allow you to connect dynamically and pull in our data into your dashboards on the fly. So you don't actually have to download the data. Um, and then at the very bottom of this page, uh, we have a short description about uh, two of our programs that are in this uh, website, American Community Survey and our County Business Patterns Program, as well as some links to some of our other data tools and products that are available at the Census Bureau. Uh, I mentioned earlier about business formation statistics. Right now, we have a link to BFS here at the bottom of the page, but in about a week, we are going to be adding another panel to this dashboard that now actually has that really good um, data on business startups from the business formation statistics incorporated right into this panel. 
and about three weeks after that, we will be incorporating in both the small business pulse survey data and the household pulse survey data. Again, we're trying to make this platform be sort of the one-stop shopping uh, for people who are trying to understand what's going on in our economy and in their local communities due to COVID-19. Um, and a lot of times merging these data across the different um, across the different programs ends up creating a resource that is very valuable. Um, I'll, I'll tell you sort of a, a local story uh, that affects, uh, personally affected me um, about restaurants in Crofton, Maryland, uh, where I currently live. Um, two of the restaurants that are in town are owned by friends of my family um, that we know them well. Uh, one of them um, has it's a very nice restaurant. Uh, one of them was very much convinced over years of running a restaurant that the main customers that they cared about were customers who came into their restaurant in person. Um, for the 20 years that that restaurant has been open, they have never offered carryout or delivery service um, and basically did perfectly well uh, doing that. Uh, the second restaurant, um, is owned by a family friend, um, and their daughter actually used to pay play soccer for me uh, when I used to coach a soccer team. Uh, she graduated from, from Rutgers University, uh, was a business major, and when she came home, she decided to help out her family. <clears throat> and one of the first changes she made to her business was to say, Mom and Dad, Coach Haight works at the Census Bureau. He told me about all this great data that we have. Um, and the data is showing that people in Crofton don't want to always eat out. Sometimes we are tired. Sometimes we drive on the beltway and take an hour and a half to get home at six o'clock at night, and we're just tired and we don't want to go out to dinner, but we want to be able to carry, take out the food and bring it home with us. So the minute she came home, she convinced her parents to offer a carry out and delivery service. Um, and I'm happy to report that during this whole pandemic, the second business, has done reasonably well for itself. They understood their customers better than the first restaurant, um, and they basically were able to keep going with over half of their staff still employed uh, during the whole pandemic. They understood their customers. The first restaurant really struggled um, switching from a in-person dining experience to a delivery and carry out type of experience. Um, and I am sort of sad to say they're probably not gonna recover uh, from this. They, they really are having a tough time. Um, so the statistics that Census has can really help guide business decisions so, because it helps you understand your customers better than maybe you think you might. And again, this platform was designed to make some of these data accessible. So with that, I am done. Um, Alex, does do we want to turn it back over to you or does anybody have any questions for Barbara or I?